Salvation's plan finished. 
cross now is empty, and so is the tomb. Two thousand years now have faded away, while kings and their kingdoms still lie in their Congregational singing, 
wonderful specials this morning. Choir, you've done a great job. Praise the Lord for that. Uh, to set the tone for the service and to prepare our hearts for the message from God this morning. Thank you so much. Young people, you can be dismissed at this time and go enjoy a great Easter Sunday morning in Children's Church. What a blessing that is. If you'll join me in your Bibles this morning to the book of Mark, Mark chapter number 16 this morning, Mark 16. I pray that we can uh, be a blessing to you today as we share a familiar passage, uh, a classic Easter uh, Resurrection Sunday passage this morning. But it is wonderful to know that our Savior lives. He lives today. Uh, we don't have to worry about uh, going and visiting a mausoleum, going and visiting a grave. He lives. And he wants to be active in your life today. He's active in our lives. He, he wants to direct us. He wants to guide us if we'll just allow him. Uh, but he lives today. So join me, Mark chapter number 16 and verse number 1. Mark 16, verse number 1. And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came into the sepulcher at the rising of the sun. And they said among themselves, Who shall roll away the stone from the door of the sepulcher? And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. And entering into the sepulcher, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were affrighted. And he said unto them, Be not affrighted. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. Listen, if you're in the habit of marking things in your Bible, there's a good place to mark. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go your way, tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall you see him as he said unto you. What a promise there. And they went out quickly and fled from the sepulcher, for they trembled and were amazed. Neither said they anything to any man, for they were afraid. Now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene out of whom he had cast seven devils. And she went out and told them that had been with him, and they mourned and wept. And they, when they had heard that he was alive and had been seen of her, believed not. And after that, he appeared in another form uh, to two of them as they walked and went into the country. And they went and told it, to the, uh, to the residue, neither believed they them. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and unbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. This morning, I'd like to bring just a simple thought entitled this, An Amazing Morning. An Amazing Morning. Let's pray together this morning. Father, thank you, Lord, that we've gathered together on this Sunday morning, this beautiful day you've provided. And Lord, we remember this amazing morning. That this morning that, Father, you raised your precious son from the grave, our Savior. And Father, today we ought to stand amazed at what you've done for us, what he's done for us. Father, help us now as we glean truth from your word. Father, I pray that we would push away any distractions this morning. Father, we, Lord, would you, would you push the devil out this morning? Father, he wants to distract our minds he wants to rob us of the truth that is being shown from your word today. Father, help us today to push away the distractions, push away the, the chatter. Father, help us to see truth today. And Father, I, I pray, Lord, there may be one here that's lost. There may be one that's tuned in this morning. 
that's lost, that's never trusted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Oh, Father, what a day it would be to see that soul come to Christ. Father, have an amazing day. Father, as we reminisce and we think about this amazing morning, Father, I pray you pour into our hearts and our lives. Lord, warm us today. We certainly need you. In Jesus' precious name, we humbly pray. Amen. There was once a, a man, <clears throat> and very similar story. You may have found yourself in a similar situation. If you're a parent and you have a young child, listen, you know how children get. They, they want to drive from the back seat. Does anyone have a child that likes to drive from the back seat? Boy, I do sometimes. But here's a five-year-old boy. He's in the back of the car. Daddy's driving him to school. But daddy's headed to work, and daddy was a busy man. All of us are busy, right? We're all busy going here and there, everywhere. Daddy's on the phone. He's making a work call. Little boy's in the back, and little boy is having a come apart. You ever seen somebody have a come apart? Well, this little boy's having a come apart in the back seat. They pull up to a red light, and he is daddy, 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 daddy. Look, daddy, 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 look. Now, sometimes it may be a butterfly. Sometimes it may be a bird, right? But he is, Daddy, 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 you got to look at this. It's something great, Daddy. You're going to miss it. And Daddy's on the phone. He covers up the phone. That never works, does it? You ever been on the phone with somebody when they try to do that? You hear everything that's happening in the background. But he tried to muffle his phone. He said, Son, what is it? What is going on? He said, Daddy, look, look, look. Every morning they had passed this same graveyard on their way to school. They had passed it several times. But on this day, there was something different. You see, this graveyard, this cemetery was preparing for a funeral. Uh, so the grave diggers had been out and they had dug a grave. And there's a big mound of dirt sitting over there beside of it. A little boy, he's, Daddy, 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 there's something amazing. I want you to see it. His daddy finally said, Son, what is it? What, what do you need? He said, Daddy... One of them got out. Isn't that amazing? Wow. We, we think about that and we chuckle and it's funny. But I'm going to tell you something. There's some truth in this. There has been one that escaped the grave. And today, my friend, we celebrate him. We celebrate what he has done for us. He lives, my friend. He conquered death, hell, and the grave. And you and I ought to rejoice as Christians today. Reminiscing on what he has done for us. Here's, here's, the, here's the, the tension. Here, here's what happens in our life. Oftentimes, we go through life. We go day to day. We do the things. We go through all the events of today. You, you folks are going to be busy after a while. Ladies, you probably got stuff in the crock pot. You've probably been cooking since 5 o'clock this morning. But oftentimes, you know what we forget? The amazing morning. We, 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 we just gloss over it. It's just second nature. We as Christians, it's Easter. Listen, we're going to have all the family gatherings. But I wonder how often do we truly stand amazed at what Jesus Christ has done for us. What the God of the heavens, the God of the earth has done for you and I. Does it resonate in our lives as we ponder the magnitude of this event? This morning, the God of glory sent his son to die on a cross and he triumphantly raised him from the grave on that amazing morning. Here's the question. Do we stand amazed and cherish the truth of this glorious event? Do we stand amazed and cherish the truth? May we see just a few simple thoughts this morning to help us stand amazed. Notice with me first in verse number one of chapter 16 of the book of Mark. There's an amazing concern, an amazing concern. Notice, and when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. These ladies cared for Jesus Christ. They had a concern for him. They loved him. They loved his teachings. They loved following him. And they had a concern for him. But, friend, they had a heartache. They were hurting. They had lost the one that they loved. They were experiencing this tremendous grief in their lives. The heartache. The heartache they had felt for three days now. Their Savior, their Lord, their King, their Master had gone to the grave. Now, I want you to think about something. All of us in here, most of us have lost someone. 
And as time goes on, the world goes on, doesn't it? The world seems to forget. And boy, oh boy, we still hurt, right? We, we still remember. We still reminisce. Here, these ladies, three days had passed. Probably a lot of those folks who stood there at the foot of the cross that day, it was already over with. They were on to the next step in life. But these ladies, they were still hurting. They had a tremendous, amazing care for our Lord. They wanted to go and anoint him. Now, this wasn't that they were going to mummify him. They were taking spices and these sweet odors to go help with the death process. The death process is ugly. It's terrible. And they wanted to make sure that their Lord, their, their Lord, the one they had lived with and, and walked with and served with, was taken care of in death. They had a tremendous concern. They had good intentions. Good intentions. There's a principle here that you and I can see. You and I ought to have good intentions. Great intentions. Psalms 125.4 says this. Do good, O Lord, and to those that be good, and to them that are upright in their hearts. Here, these ladies had lived with Christ. They saw him and his goodness. And here in death that they saw that Christ was going through in their human minds, they couldn't comprehend the resurrection. They just wanted to do good. They had good intentions, but also they had insecurity. They had insecurity. Preacher, how can you say that? Well, they're bringing spices. He told them he was going to rise again. But they're bringing the spices. And notice the conversation that they're having. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came into the sepulcher at the rising of the sun. I wonder if it was cold that morning like it was cold this morning. But they came early. They were uh, devoted here. But they had insecurity. Notice in verse number three. And they said among themselves, Who? shall roll away the stone from the door of the sepulcher. Their insecurity was evident. Here he's already said he's going to rise again. And here they are walking. And they're thinking in their minds, who's going to move this big old stone? There's, there's going to be guards that are there, no doubt. But who's going to move this stone? Can I say Jesus Christ had already answered that question for them. He had already told them it was going to be taken care of. Mark chapter number 9, earlier in Mark's account, in verse number 30, and they departed thence and passed through Galilee as he would that any man should know it. For he taught his disciples and said unto them, he's already told them, the son of man is delivered into the hands of men and they shall kill him. And after that he is killed, he shall rise the third day. But they understood not the saying, get this, and were afraid to ask him. You know, sometimes we don't know what God's will is for our life because we're afraid to ask. We don't have the answers that we're looking for that we desire to have. Why? Because we're afraid to ask. Here, these disciples, they could have known everything, but they were afraid to ask. That's what the Bible says. He, he could have enlightened their hearts. They wouldn't have to gone through so much grief, but they failed to ask. And another account here in Matthew 17, very similar Matthew's account. And while they abode in Galilee, Jesus said unto them, The Son of Man shall be betrayed into the hands of men, and they shall kill him. And the third day he shall be raised again. And they were exceeding sorry. You know why they were sorry? Because they didn't understand. They didn't understand that their Savior, their Lord, was going to rise again. They couldn't grasp it in their minds. And no doubt, this day, heartache, concern, overwhelmed these ladies as they made their way to the tomb. They were overwhelmed. Can I ask you something this morning? Are you overwhelmed today? Is there something in your life that has you overwhelmed? Can I say the answer for these ladies is the answer for you today, and it is Jesus Christ. He is the answer. We all get overwhelmed. We all get born with grief. But Jesus is the answer. The Bible says in Psalms 34, 18, The Lord is nigh to them that are of a broken heart, and save us such as be a contrite spirit. The Bible says in John 14, 1, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. Psalm 55, 22, Cast Thy burden upon the Lord, and he 
shall sustain thee. I wouldn't embarrass this individual, but I had just a tremendous visit this morning. A, a tremendous visit. And, and I saw a man who is living this. Cast his burden upon the Lord. And you know what? The Lord is sustaining him. This morning, maybe you're overwhelmed. Maybe you're burdened down. These ladies were burdened. And they looked to the Lord. And the Lord helped them. We see an amazing concern. Notice, secondly, an amazing discovery. Notice verse number four. And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. An amazing discovery. Imagine walking. To, put yourself in these ladies' position. You're going to carry these spices. You're going to the tomb. You're worried about it as you're walking. Uh, Brother Garrett read this morning, there's an earthquake. That, listen, there are some things that are happening. And you see that stone's rolled away. An amazing discovery. A discovery that was about to take place that would change their lives forever. Forever. In that moment of time. Notice with me, doubts were alleviated in verse number four. They worried about that stone. Christ had already taken care of it. Doubts alleviated. The doubt was dispelled. The stone was shoved aside the sight of this discovery. Maybe in the moment they recalled the Savior's words that he would rise. Maybe in that moment they recollected and remembered, hey, he's, he said something that he was going to rise again. The Bible says in Proverbs 3, verse number 5, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not into that own understanding. Listen, you may be going through something today and you say, preacher, there's a stone in my path. Listen, I don't know how I'm going to make ends meet. I don't know how. Listen, we're going to get through this difficult situation. Trust in the Lord. Lean not into your own understanding. Christ had it already figured out. He has already done the work. Notice not only doubts alleviated, but a daring attitude. Notice this daring attitude we see in verse number five. And entering into the sepulcher. Now, I don't know about you, but if I'm going to a, a mausoleum, right? Let's just call it what it is, this tomb. And the door is open. I don't think I'm walking in it. They were daring. They were daring. The Bible says that angel had invited them in. They had a daring attitude. Can I say this morning, Christians, there's a lot of things that we don't do for the Lord that we ought to do for the Lord. Why? Because we're not daring. We're not willing to take a chance. Now we're not willing to, to step out of our comfort zone. They had a daring attitude. That word entering in, it means to make an entrance. They were brave. They were encouraged as they went in. It's amazing uh, when you see that. And entering into the sepulcher. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 31 and verse 6, Be strong and of a good courage. 1 Corinthians 16, 13 says, Watch ye, stand fast in the faith. Quit you like men. Be strong. You know what we need today? Strong Christians. Listen, we're going to face a time in, in America in the coming years, in the coming months, to where we need to be strong in Jesus Christ and lean on him. Be daring. Be daring. Notice not only did they have a daring attitude, but they had a discerning attention. Notice, and they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were affrighted. What they saw was the amazing discovery. The tomb was empty. Who they had gone there, the spices for, he wasn't there. Amazing discovery. The tomb was empty. Listen, every other religion in the world that worships a God, you know where their God is? In a graveyard somewhere. Muhammad. Buddha, Confucius. Listen, they go worship a pile of bones. Listen, I've never been to Jerusalem, may never go to Jerusalem, but I can tell you one thing. There's a tomb over there that's empty this morning. Praise God because God rose from the dead. The tomb is empty. And we shouldn't be surprised at what God can do. It's amazing when you really think about it. The amazing concern, the amazing discovery. Notice the amazing announcement. In verse number six, and he saith unto them, be not affrightened. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. This angel had their attention. The tomb was empty. 
And now he's going to deliver a powerful announcement to them. Notice the, the proclamation, be not a frightened. Uh, don't be astonished. That's what that word would mean. Listen, don't, don't let it rattle you. Don't, let, don't be shaking in your boots. Listen, he's already told you he wasn't going to be here. He's not here. By the way, he's risen, the Bible says. You seek Christ. What a, what a powerful statement. Matthew 28, verse number 6. He is not here, the word of God says. He is risen. And that angel said, come and see the place where the Lord lay. One writer said it like this. When we see the place where, the Lord, where they laid him is now empty, we see that the Father did not forsake Jesus. When we see the place where they laid him is now empty, we see that death is conquered. When we see the place where they laid him is now empty, we see that we have a living friend in Jesus. Friend, you and I ought to be encouraged by the resurrection this morning. Encouraged. He's risen. He's not there. Notice not only do we see the proclamation, but notice the plan. Notice the plan. Verse number seven, he says, but go your way and tell his disciples and Peter. We're living in a, in a time in a world today to where there's messages and emails and texts. And it, there's little things we carry in our pockets buzz all the time. But can I say this is the greatest message that's ever been sent. Go and tell the disciples. He lives. He's risen. What a message to deliver. The greatest message known to man. He says, go sell, tell the disciples, get this, and Peter. I think it's so important. Peter, had, had, he had really messed up there in the end, hadn't he? He had really fallen away. And here the Lord wanted to single Peter out and say, Peter, listen, son, I'm alive. I'm risen. Come on home. Come on back. Poor Peter. Spurgeon said it like this. If any of you have behaved worse to your master than others, you are peculiarly called to come to him now. You have grieved him. You have been grieving him because you have grieved him. You have been brought to repentance after having slidden away from him. And now he's inviting you to himself. Peter, come on home. It's okay. Come on home. The Bible says you shall see him as he said. One writer said this shows us that when Jesus invites us, he always remembers his promises. As he said unto you, the angel added that invitation. What Jesus says he will do, he can never fail in any promise. He will keep them. He will keep his word. 2 Corinthians 1.20 says, For all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him amen, and the glory of God by us. Not only do we see the plan, but notice the procedure. The procedure. And by, go your way. Tell his disciples and Peter that goeth before you to Galilee, and they shall see him. And as he said unto you, but notice verse number 8. And they went out quickly and fled the sepulcher. For they trembled and were amazed. Neither they said anything to any man. For they were afraid that the procedure was that they ran out quickly. Uh, God had given them a plan through this angelic messenger. And they ran out. They ran out and told others. They ran. They did as they told. Boy, it's a lot different than today, right? We're told. We're commissioned to go out and tell. But we want to get hung up in debates. We want to get hung up in competitions. We want to get hung up in all the things that distract us from telling the world he lives. These ladies, they didn't fall into that trap. It wasn't a competition. Who's going to get there first to tell them? Listen, they wasn't putting big banners up all over the place. Listen, it was all about just telling others he lives. That's what you and I must do. Tell others he lives. The amazing concern Amazing discovery, amazing announcement. Notice the amazing presence. Verse number nine. Now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. That's where he went first. Remember this morning in sunrise service, she's out there weeping. She's, she's having a hard way to go out there in that garden. And Christ came and he loved her, cared for her. 
He was there with her. In John 20, we read this morning, verse number 16, Jesus said in her, Mary, she turned herself and said to him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Imagine that being there. Imagine feeling the love just exuding out of her life towards Christ. But notice, notice what the Bible says. It's, it's kind of heartbreaking here. And she went out and told them that had been with him. And as they mourned and wept, and they, when they had heard that he was alive, notice this, and had been seen of her, believe not. Rejection. Rejection. They didn't believe it. I know he said he's going to do this. You're saying that you've seen him. You're saying that you spoke to him, but I'm not going to believe it. I'm going to reject it. Then notice, not only did he appear to Mary, he, Magdalene, he appeared to the, the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. The Bible says this, and after he appeared in another form to two of them, as they walked and went into the country, you see that account in Luke 24, verse 28 through 32, one of my favorite passages in all of Scripture. Uh, he had been walking with them, talking with them. He, he, listen, he, Genesis to Revelation, he was giving it to them on the road. And their eyes were opened, the Bible says, and they knew him and he vanished out of their sight. And they said one to another, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way? And while he opened to us the scriptures, these folks knew that they knew who they had been with. But here, notice what the Bible says here in our passage today. Verse number 13, and they went and told unto the residue. So they went and told to the others. The others, that they, they ran back. Listen, he lives, but notice, neither believed they them. Rejection. Rejection. He get, talks to the 11 in verse number 14. Afterward, he peered into the 11 as they sat at meat and unbraided them with their unbelief. Listen, he's getting on to them. I told you I was going to do these things, and you didn't believe. Listen, Mary came to you. The two disciples came to you. You didn't believe. And then he uses an interesting word here, and the hardness of heart. Hardness of heart. It, it comes from a Greek word, skelrocardia. Skelros. It's a word we get the English word skeleton. Cardia is the word that we get cardiology or heart from. They had hearts in that moment that was hard as bone, dry and dusty, no life in it. But they had been with him. They had walked with him. Christian, we need to be on guard today that you and I don't develop hard hearts towards the things of God. Here we see that they had skelos, cardia. They had hardened hearts. They had bone hearts. What a shame. What a shame. These folks who had walked with him, the rejection was there. And can I say, the rejection's still there. There's going to be preachers who will preach their hearts out today. And there's going to be hard-hearted people who will not receive Christ. There's going to be hard-hearted Christians who will not make changes today on the day that we celebrate our risen Lord. Why? Skelos, cardia, hard hearts. The Bible says this in Revelation 3, in verse number 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. If you're here this morning and you're lost, I want you to know he's knocking at your heart's door today. He wants you to know he lives. He wants you to know he loves you. He wants you to know that he will save you. The Bible says this. There's none righteous, no, not one. Listen, you're here this morning. You've tuned in. You're lost. You realize you're lost. You realize, listen, I've never trusted in Jesus Christ, but I'm a bad person. Yeah, join the club. We're all bad. The Bible says there's none righteous. All our righteousness is as filthy rags. But God commendeth his love towards us. And that while we were yet sinners, that's you and me, that's everyone, Christ died for us. The just for the unjust. And here we see that he's risen from the dead. And listen, he wants you to know that he lives today. 
And the Bible goes further in Romans 10. In verse number 9 says this, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Get rid of that skelos cardia. Get rid of that hard heart and invite Jesus Christ to come into your heart today and save you. And he will. And he will. Amazing concern. Amazing discovery. Amazing announcement. Amazing presence. Lastly, very quickly, because we're out of time. Amazing commission. Amazing commission. Notice with me, verse number 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. You know what we're called to do as Christians today? On this day of days, on this wonderful day, we're called to reach and to preach. To reach and to preach. That word go, it means to, to go out. It means to get out of our comfort zone. Listen, move for Jesus Christ. We're to tell others that he lives. First Peter said it like this. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you the reason of hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Friend, why do you, why do you seem to, why don't you curse? Why don't, why don't you drink? Listen, why do you have so much joy? Why do you go to church on Wednesdays and Sundays? Or why do you talk about your Lord living? Why do you, why do you do this? Why do you do that? Well, it's the hope that's in me. And I want to tell you about him. You and I are called to go. And to reach. Can I say something this morning? And I, I don't mean to be crash or, or rude. But you might. You might. Be the only one. Standing in the gap. You might be the only gospel witness. In that person you're thinking about in your mind this morning. You might be the only one. Who's ever going to share the truth. Of the gospel with them. Listen the Bible says that you and I are to go. And to tell. Here, we're to tell that he lives. Take away this morning, preacher. Preacher, what, what are we going away with this morning? The God of glory sent his son to die on a cross for you and I. And you and I, you know what we need to do? We need to stand amazed at what he's done for us. Stand amazed this morning. Here in just a moment, we're going to just have a, a just a, Rebecca's going to play. Maybe this morning, maybe this morning, I'd like to humble yourself and just come and just thank God on this Resurrection Sunday for what he's done for you. Thank him for saving your wretched, sin-black soul today. Maybe if you're lost, listen, don't hesitate. Don't wait one moment. Rush down the aisle. I'd love to open the Bible and show you this morning how you can be saved. Hell is real, my friend, and heaven is sweet. And I want to meet you in heaven one day. If you're lost, let's get saved today. What a day. You can have an amazing morning. Do you know that? Trusting in Jesus Christ. Christian, let's thank God for what he's done for us. Father, we sure love you. We'd like to thank you for joining us today on our live stream service. We pray that you are encouraged, that you are blessed, and that you are challenged by God's word. If we can be of any assistance to you, please feel free to reach us at our email below. We pray that you have a wonderful day, and God bless.